Welcome back. In the last video we talked about consecutive integers and just the basic introduction to what they are, uh, how to find the middle number which is the average, and then how to find quick sums. In this video I'm going to show you how to deal with consecutive integers uh, from the standpoint of variables. So I'm going to start out by talking about just consecutive integers, but there's also different types of consecutives which, which I'll get into. Um, so if you're just talking about straight consecutive and you're talking about them in terms of variables, uh, you're basically looking at just the following um, variables. x is the first one, then you have x plus 1, you have x plus 2, x plus 3, etc. You just keep adding one to the variable. And that may not seem um, very concrete right now. It may seem a little bit abstract, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to make sense in a minute when I do some problems uh, here with you. So that's just consecutives. So what if I had something different, though? Let's say that I had um, consecutive, but I'm going to throw a twist into this. I'm going to give you consecutives, but now I want to say they're consecutive, but they're going to be even integers. Now they're going to be even. So the way that I would do that is that I would have x, I would have x plus 2, I would have x plus 4, and I would have x plus 6, dot, 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 dot. So an example of this, you know, let me just give you some examples over here. Let me just start out with the first one. The first one, an example, could have been um, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, okay? This is just an example of some regular consecutive integers. Now if I said consecutive even integers, let's say I started at 10, I would have 10, which would be x, and then x plus 2 would give me 12, 14, 16, and then 18. So those are consecutive even integers. In other words, we're just jumping, we're adding 2 each time. Now, the next one we're going to talk about is going to be what? What do you think the next one's going to be? The next one's going to be consecutive odd integers. And it's very similar to the even, so I'm just going to write odd down here. So it's actually the same exact thing as the evens, because when I add two, uh, to an odd number, I still keep getting an odd number. When I add 2 to an even number, I still keep getting an even number. So I'm just going to have x, x plus 2, x plus 4, x plus 6, etc. Same thing, same exact pattern as the even ones. And in this case, I might have 11, 13, 15, 17, and 19. And, and you can see that each time I'm just adding 2 to, to the series. So I still, I'm still getting the same concept here. But this is important to understand what these mean because when we get problems, a lot of times the problem will ask us um, about consecutive integers, consecutive even integers, or consecutive odd integers. So depending upon the problem, we need to take different approaches. So the first problem I'm going to deal with here is really just going to deal with just straight up consecutive integers. But the problem is going to be a little bit different. So let me scroll down here. So the problem is this. The sum of the first and the third term of five consecutive integers is 26. Find the five integers. So this one gets a little, more, a little bit more in depth than just finding the, the average, which is the middle number. We actually have to put uh, apply the algebra here to find out uh, these numbers. So I know that I have five consecutive integers, and I'm using the the, I'm finding the sum of the first and the third. So let's just review what we talked about here. If I have consecutive integers, which was my blue one, right? This was the first one that I did up here, consecutive integers. I'm going to have x, comma, x plus 1, comma, x plus 2, comma, x plus 3, comma, x plus 4. And these are my these are going to be my five consecutive integers, okay? And then the n, the, the term, this is the first term, second term, third term, the fourth term, and the fifth term, okay? So just to clarify that. And the problem said that the first the sum of the first and the third 
is 26. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Well, where is the uh, the first and the third term? I'm going to do this in a slightly different color here, just to emphasize. So here's my first term. Here's my third term right here. Right. So this is the x and this is the x plus 2. So the sum of those two, so the sum of x plus x plus 2, which is, this is my third term, is, which means equal 26. So I can combine my terms here and I can say 2x plus 2 equals 26 and I can continue to solve for x so I can say 2x equals 24 so x equals 12 so what does that represent? Well x is the first term right? so if I want to find out all the terms now I know that that's my first term so I can go back up here and I can say, okay, my first term is 12, and now I know the rest of the terms, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So that's how you would find uh, consecutive integers if you knew a like the first and the third term, the first and the fifth term. You can use this algebra to find your way through that. All right, so finally in this video, I just would like to point out that consecutive integers and consecutive even integers are pretty much everywhere uh, that you look, but one common place that we can find them is in triangles. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a, a triangle that's important that you should know. And we talk about this all the time, and this is the 3-4-5 triangle. 3-4-5, and that is a right triangle, and that is one of the most important triangles that you need to know for the SAT and the relationship is by the sides not the angles right but again these are consecutive um, integers so this you know the 3 at this term right here would be the x this would be the x plus 1 and this would be the x plus 2 term also I would like to point out that if we're doing similar triangles let's just say that I took this whole triangle and I'm gonna multiply the whole thing times 2 so it's a similar triangle. Similar triangles, I just scale it up. I zoom it up, right? I take the whole triangle and I multiply all the sides by the same factor, right? So this is how, you know, you can see this in my other videos on similar triangles. I always just scale the similar triangle up. I don't do proportions because proportions are very confusing and they're, they're not necessary. So the better way to think about this is every single side of this triangle is increased by a factor of two. So if I did that, I'm going to get six. I'm going to get 8 and I'm going to get 10. Now, in addition to being a 3, 4, 5 triangle that's just scale, that varies by a scale of 2, what do I have here now? Now I have consecutive even integers, right? So if I took a look at this triangle, this is consecutive evens, right? And this is consecutives. Okay. So again, um, if we wrote out the terms here, again, just to clarify again, the first term, we would have the first term, the second term, and the third term here. So the first term would be x, the second term is x plus 1, and the third term is x plus 2. And the actual numbers that we're going to get here in this one is going to be 3, 4, and 5, 3, 4, 5 triangle. On this one, just to clarify again, I have consecutive evens. So my first, I have my first term, I have my second term, I have my third term. So the first term is x, the second term is x plus 2, and the third term is x plus 4. And the actual numbers that that would correspond to are 6, 8, and 10. So hopefully you can see that consecutive integers and consecutive even integers are going to be everywhere on the SAT. You need to know how to find the average of them. You need to know how to uh, work with them algebraically to find specific terms and you also need to be able to apply them to geometry and triangles to understand that something as similar as a 3, 4, 5 triangle is consecutive integers and a 6, 8, 10 is also consecutive even integers. Alright, that's all I've got for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.